or African? Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> this video has gone viral on the internet lately. They took a panel of young Arabs and decided to ask them questions. That's a quite popular concept these days, with many channels using it for numerous topics. But in this case, the video got very interesting for us when the panel got asked the following question. Are Egyptians Arab or African? And I wanted to react to their reaction because I believe that it can teach us a lot about history, representation, identity, and legacy. So, let's watch their entire reaction and analyze their answer in an historical point of view. Are Egyptians Arab or African? Oh. Number two? No, they're both, Arab and Africans. Both? Come on, pick one. Wait, hold on, did you say they're both? Yeah, they are both. They're, yeah, okay. They're African and Arab, so he's not, he's not one of them. That's a slip and that's a slide. You're out. Number three. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> yes. Well, back in my. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, Egypt isn't is in, is in uh, Africa, so yeah. technically, it's uh, we're all African. <laughs> Africa. Number four. <laughs> Elitnin. Exactly. Elitnin. But if you had to choose one. Elitnin. Oh, <laughs> notice how he said Elitnin. Number five. Both are Elitnin. I mean, he's copying. Uh -oh. But here's the thing. It's obvious that the question created a lot of confusion. There are two Egyptians in the panel. The first one is seated at the center with the group of people who must guess, and the second one is masked and needs to be unmasked to complete the game. When asked the question, some said Arabs, others said both, and one said Africans. However, things became interesting when they mentioned the concept of an identity crisis among Egyptians. About number four and five saying it in, yeah. I feel like Egyptians themselves, they don't want to answer. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like they know that they're being recorded, so they don't want to answer. I thought it's an identity crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one. <laughs> This is particularly intriguing considering that the country we know as Egypt today is still situated in the African continent. It's not as though it has been transported elsewhere, it's still there. Yet, the inhabitants of the country struggle to answer a simple question about its location. While this may seem trivial as the video originates from a comedy channel, the issue is more profound than it appears. Even figures like Zahi Hawass, who are supposed to be educated, tend to give the same type of answer. To Dr. Zahi Hawass, an award-winning, world-renowned archaeologist, his life's work has been dedicated to the discovery and research of ancient Egyptian antiquities. Not surprisingly, his office is full of books on the topic, some of which depict dark-skinned ancient Egyptians. But he says there's an explanation. No, they were dark-skinned, but, but they were not, not black. But they are not negro. Mm. Because look at the, the, the length of the, the Negroes like that and the nose like this. It's not really in the Egyptian uh, origin at all. It's mm. different, completely different. Mm. And this is why we have, you cannot connect the Egyptian civilization with the African at all. It's different. At all from Celebrus time, Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. it's different. It means that there is a deeper identity problem behind something that is affecting people's perception and that has a deeper impact on our modern perception of ancient history and that's that problem that we are going to analyze in this video we're going to dissect this problem surgically and put our finger on the hidden element that's causing the problem why would inhabitants of egypt be unable to locate their own country on a map the truth is that we all have had this feeling at some point in our life at least i do there was a time I also saw Egypt like some Middle Eastern slash Arab country. That's also the vibe spread by pop culture and mainstream media, right? So, just like many people, when I got told for the first time that ancient Egyptians were actually an indigenous African population that was identical to the natural of the continent, I was shocked. And I even think that I completely disagreed. I was deep in the rabbit hole indeed. To me, they looked just like the people we see today, like what I had always seen in the movies and what we see in this panel of modern Middle Easterners. And let's be honest, why wouldn't they? 
These people live in those areas today, so they represent anything that may have happened on that land, right? That's usually how we think and see the world. But I think that an interesting thing to do in this specific case is to wonder what answer would we get if we asked the same question to the ancient Egyptians. Would it be the same? Would there be the same confusion? I think that if we asked the mainstream to give us the ancient Egyptians' answer, they would agree. They love projecting this idea of an ancient Egyptian state that is always in between Africa and the Levant. And that's true, but not in the way they project it. The location of Kemet is indeed in Africa, but is the border country between Africa and Asia. But this, like Metatron tried to promote it, does not mean that the state entity, the culture, the ingenuity, are the product of modern Asians and Africans. It is a purely African entity that extended from the south to the north. But you may say that these are just my words. So, let's go a bit deeper. What would ancient Egyptians respond if they were asked the same question? Well, at first, they would say that they are children of Tamari, or their beloved land. Rooting them firmly and directly to the land they occupied which is more or less the borders of modern Egypt. This, I know with certainty, is the answer that all those who disagree with us love to promote. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that that mythology isn't its own interesting field of studies, but a statement from someone who is an expert in Roman and Greek mythology saying that it wouldn't exist without Africa, it's nonsense, absolutely nonsense. For instance, Bernal in the book Black Athena, which is a text that needs to be taken with a grain of salt, but it is rich in interesting suggestions, rightly emphasizes the points of contact and cultural connections the Greeks' myths have towards Egypt and the Near East. But looking for connection with Black Panther and Central Africa is absurd. The Greek writer Herodotus records a legal dispute that provides one definition of Egyptian identity, a community community on the western delta fringes argued that it should not pay tax because it was outside Egypt, but the oracle consulted in the case gave the answer that all who drank of the Nile north of Elephantine were Egyptians. In the case of Herodotus, we can even argue that since it's related to taxes, the definition is a little bit biased. And for those who have watched the previous video, you probably remember the disconnection problem. I highly recommend you to watch it if you really want an in-depth explanation. Here, I will just summarize it for the sake of this video's understanding. It is a tool used by the West to rewrite history at their advantage. Basically, they promote a perception of African history that is completely disconnected. Each event, country, histories are detached from the global course of events in order to be read independently of the other events, populations, and cultures that surround it. And by dislocating or breaking down things that way, they end up with small independent pieces that they can reconnect to each other in a completely new way. And that way is usually their way. It allows them to tell a completely new story that benefits them. And that's what many African scholars called episodic history. Meaning that they only show you some episodes randomly displayed and not the entire season chronologically. Your understanding of the events is completely biased because you don't see the whole picture and that the timeline given to you is completely bogus. You may think that things will end up a certain way, while there is a complete turn of events during a following episode that will change your entire perception of the entire story. What you think in the beginning isn't necessarily the truth. And that's the same with African history under Western influence. So, what is the issue with the answer defining Kemites as the people living in Kemet? Well, it is that stopping there means contributing to episodic history. Let me explain how. Many years ago, when I first started studying Kemet, I remember noticing something quite strange about the narrative of its emergence. Scientists always said that there was some type of mystery surrounding it because they couldn't find many traces of development in Egypt itself. As if the people appeared with all these great tools and advanced knowledge and then started building. Now you may be wondering why is it a problem? Well, it's necessary to understand that in real life, things don't work like that. In reality, things don't happen that way. Children aren't born speaking and walking right from the start. First they sit, then crawl, then walk, and then run. That's one of the main rules of the universe. Everything is gradual. Unless of a miracle, things always work like that. 
and despite all their ingenuity, ancient Egyptians are no exception to this rule. They didn't just pop up like that with a fully formed writing system, an advanced knowledge of architecture, and science. They went through the whole process of trial and error like everyone else. The only difference is that that process... Unfortunately, we have to end the video here due to YouTube's censorship policies and other technical issues. As a result, we are sharing the full and censored video exclusively on Patreon. Interested in understanding why the case of Kemet is so special and where this video will lead us? Join us on Patreon where we delve into the uncensored truth. Support our mission by becoming a patron today. You can find the link in the description below and in the comments. Thank you for watching and supporting our channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications. If you're unable to join Patreon right now, no worries, I understand. My goal has always been to freely educate, but it requires significant investment of time, money, and effort. After years of giving back, I need your support to continue serving our community. Let's discuss the video's content in the comments. What are your thoughts on what you just watched? If you enjoyed this video, you'll find the following ones equally enriching. Thank you once again for watching. See you in the next one.